Hey guys, welcome. In this tutorial, I'm gonna show you how to create an awesome knockback effect. This is actually the same knockback effect that I use in the commercial project I'm working on right now, Veil of Maya. And I had very specific needs for this knockback. So we are going to create a knockback function that can knock back the player in any direction, smoothly and consistently, give you control over the acceleration with an animation curve, still receive movement input, so your character can either move with or resist against the knockback a little bit, also handle a secondary knockback force. For example, if you want your player to be knocked upwards a little bit, and it's designed to work with a rigid body player controller. All right, let's get started. So here is our opening scene. We have a player that can move and jump and attack, and we have two enemies, and they both shoot projectiles towards the player. What we want to make happen is that when these projectiles shoot towards the player, we want it to knock back the player. And this is going to be really cool and give us a lot of control with our knockback. So let's start by creating a new script called knockback. Let's open that up. So the way that we're gonna make this knockback work is that we are gonna combine three different forces together, one being the direction that the player was hit, and then an optional constant force, and an optional input force meaning the direction that these projectiles are coming towards the player, that is going to be taken into account and we will knock him back in that direction. If you want to add a constant force, like let's say we just want him to slightly get knocked back up every single time, then it will also handle that. And input force literally meaning we can almost fight back against the knockback a little bit. So if you're being knocked back to the left and you hold down the left move button, you'll actually move in that direction much more quickly. And if you're being knocked back to the left and you move towards the right, then you'll barely move whatsoever. And I just find that the end result of this is a really nice, smooth, responsive feeling knockback. By the way, if you like the assets that you see in this tutorial, then you can download them for free. I've included a link in the description. You can use them personally or commercially. They're yours to do with what you want. They are completely optional. I just want to give you guys as many resources as I can to help you get started. So I want to start by setting up a few variables. This is going to knock us back for a certain amount of time. So we want to set up a float knockback time. Let's default that to 0.2. We also want to set up a multiplier for all three of our forces. So one for hit direction, one for constant, and one for input. Let's default hit direction force to 10. Let's call the next one const force, and we'll default that one to five. Let's call the next one input force, and we'll default that to 7.5. I also want to set up a public bool called is being knocked back so that we're easily able to tell when we're being knocked back and when we are not. And we're going to give that a public getter and a private setter. So we are going to handle all of this through a coroutine. So let's set up a new coroutine method called knockback action. Now there's a few parameters we're going to want to plug in. We're going to want our hit direction. And since this is a 2D game, I'm just going to make it a vector 2 called hit direction. I'm going to set up another vector 2 called constant force direction. And one more parameter called input direction. But I only need to make this a float because I don't particularly care about the Y because I'm working in a side-scrolling game. If you're working in a top-down game or you do care about the Y input, then make this a vector 2 instead. And let's call this input direction. So we already said that this knockback is going to be based off of a certain amount of time. So let's set up the timer functionality first. We're going to set up a float called elapsed time. And we're going to say while the elapsed time is less than our knockback time. If it is less than the knockback time, then we're going to want to iterate the timer. And we're going to do that by saying plus equals time dot fixed delta time. And the reason for that is because this is a coroutine, we actually have the option of deciding how often everything in this while loop is going to run. We are going to be applying knockback to the player's rigid body directly, which means we're applying velocity based on the physics system. And if we want to be applying velocity using the physics system, then we want to be doing that in fixed update. Now, this is a coroutine, and we obviously can't run a coroutine in fixed update, but we can do the next best thing, which is to make this run at the exact same time as fixed update. And we can do that by saying yield return new wait for fixed update. So now our timer, as well as the actual while loop itself, is all synced up with our fixed update. And before we forget, let's go ahead and say at the very start of this, is being knocked back is equal to true. And after the while loop is over, is being knocked back is equal to false. So these parameters up here are going to be plugged in when this actual method is called, which will be somewhere in our player health in his damage function. But we need to set up some actual local variables in here so that we can start adding these forces together. So let's set up a vector 2 called hit force, another one called constant force, 
another one called knockback force, and one last one called combined force. So let's deal with these one at a time. Well, our hit force is going to be our hit direction times our hit direction force. Our constant force is going to be equal to our constant force direction times constant force. Our knockback force is really just going to be these two combined together. And I'm going to set it within the while loop down here, which means it's going to be called multiple, multiple times. And I'll show you why we're going to do that in just a little bit. Now I want to check and see if we actually are using our input. If we are, then we're going to combine our knockback force and our input direction into combined force. And if not, then combined force is going to be just exactly the same as knockback force. So we'll say if our input direction does not equal zero, well then our combined force is going to be equal to our knockback force plus, and we can't just add a float into a vector two. So what we'll do is say new vector two and we'll plug in our input direction for the X and just a zero on the Y. Else meaning input direction is zero. Well then combined force is just going to equal knockback force. And then finally, we want to actually apply the knockback. And in order to do that, we're going to need to grab a reference to the rigid body component on the player. So we'll set up a private rigid body 2D. Let's call it RB. And we will grab a reference to that in our start function. Okay, great. So now down here, we're just going to say RB.velocity is equal to combined force. Now, this is great. We're combining a hit direction force with a constant force, and we're even taking into account our input and applying a force to that as well. However, the way that my project is currently set up, this is not going to do anything. This is applying velocity to the rigid body directly. However, if I go over to my player script and I open up my movement functions, really we're doing the exact same thing there. We are applying velocity directly to the rigid body. And so those two will conflict with each other. So for my project, I'm going to need to add a check. I don't want to be able to move or jump if my player is being knocked back. And so what I'm going to do actually in my player script here, and you can do the same wherever your player movement is, Let's grab a reference to the knockback script. Private knockback, we'll call it knockback. Let's grab that in our start function. And for mine, I'm just going to add an if right here. Knockback dot is being knocked back. If that is false, then we will actually allow the player to move and jump. Okay, so the player is not going to be able to move or jump until the knockback is complete. Your project might be set up a little differently. You'll need to put your checks in the place that makes the most sense for your project. But now with this in place, the movement function will no longer conflict with the knockback function. So now that this is done, I would like to actually call this function from somewhere and I would like to call it from my player health script when the player gets damaged. Now, my personal preference is to set up a public function that calls this coroutine within this script. And the reason I like to do it that way is because I can actually assign this coroutine to a coroutine variable, which we'll set up right now. Private coroutine, knockback coroutine. Okay, so once we've got that, we can actually go down here and set up a public method, public void call knockback. We will need all of the same parameters, so I'm just going to copy and paste those. Okay, once those are in there, what I can do is grab this knockback coroutine and say that is equal to start coroutine knockback action. And then we can pass in all of the parameters, hit direction, constant force direction, and input direction. By assigning the coroutine to this variable here, it makes stopping the coroutine much easier if we want the option to do that. So what we're going to do in player health is call this function right here. So to finally test this in our player health, let's grab a reference to our knockback script. Let's get that component in our start function. And finally, we can say knockback.call knockback. Okay, so now we actually need to figure out how to fill in these three parameters here. How do we pass in the hit direction on our player health script? Well, it depends on how your project is set up. I actually have a hit direction parameter directly built into my damage function. So where is this coming from? Well, in my project, it's being called from right here. This script is attached to the projectiles in the scene that are damaging the player. And when I call the actual damage function, it is passing in the bullets transform.write. So you'll need to pass in the direction 
of the attack in your actual damage function if you want it to work like this. Passing something in like transform.write has already been normalized, so we don't need to worry about that. But if you need to calculate the direction yourself within its own method and then pass that in right here, make sure you remember to normalize the direction or our force is going to be a little bit weird in the knockback. And if you do need to calculate the direction yourself and pass it in, just remember that direction equals destination minus origin and then don't forget to normalize it. So in my player health, I am perfectly fine to go ahead and just pass in my hit direction right here. Now for our constant force direction, again, we want this to be normalized and it's completely optional. I could throw in a vector 2.0 and we just won't have any constant force. But let's just say for the sake of example, I want the player to slightly always be knocked back upwards a little bit. So we're just going to plug in a vector 2.up. And your input direction is going to be dependent on how your project is set up as well. And whether you are using the new input system or not, either way, you very likely have some script set up where you are reading your actual movement. Mine is hooked up to the new input system and mine is right here. I've got a public vector 2 called move input that I can grab from anywhere. So however you're passing in your movement input, we are going to grab the X of that. For the input direction, I am going to pass in my own script, which is user input dot instance dot move input dot X. And actually, I'm just going to move this below this function down here. We'll check to see if our player died first, and if not, then we'll actually apply the knockback. And honestly, even if you don't have your own script, like worst case, if you're using the old input, you could just say input.getAxisRaw, pass in the horizontal like that. And if you want to use the new input system, I'll show you how to set that up really quickly. And once you've got all of that set up, then you can call whatever the name of your script is dot instance dot move input dot x. Let's remember to add the knockback script to our player. Let's also not forget to multiply our input direction by our input force. So now you can see if we get hit by a projectile, we get knocked back slightly in the direction that it's traveling and a little bit up. I can also really go along with it or I can just keep hitting left and I barely move at all. So you can play around with these four fields here. It gives you a lot of control with this knockback, but there's one more thing that I'd really like to add to give us even more control, and that is an animation curve. So I'm gonna add that up here as a public animation curve called knockback force curve. So remember I said it would make sense as to why this line was within our while loop? Well, now I'll show you why. We want to be checking our time against this animation curve here. We're going to need to set up a float called time. Let's just default that to zero. Now we can actually take this line right here. Let's put that right here instead. We also want to multiply this by a value based on our animation curve. So we're going to say multiplied by knockback force curve dot evaluate. It wants us to plug in a float time. Let's plug in our underscore time. And let's just make sure that that time gets iterated along with our elapsed time. Time plus equals time dot fixed delta time. Now time is getting iterated and now our hit force is going to be directly determined based on how far along the animation curve our time is. So now in our inspector, we've got this knockback force curve here. Let's go ahead and just select one of the presets here. So what curve dot evaluate does is it essentially takes a look at this curve and it says, well, how far along in time are we return that point right there? If we're at point five, it's going to return this point here. So with that being the case, we definitely don't want this to go all the way to one second because our knockback time is only for 0.2 seconds. So let's right click up here and go edit key and make the time 0.2 for the end. So now what we'll get is a slow climb up to our max knockback velocity. So let's try that. There we go, that's feeling nice and smooth. Now you could add an animation curve for the constant force as well as the input force if you wanted to. That's really just a matter of adding more animation curves here and then moving this down here and multiplying it by its own evaluate as well. And you could do the same thing for the input force in here. That's all I got for you guys today. Thank you so much for choosing this video to learn how to apply knockback to your player. This is a great knockback function. I actually use something very, very similar in the commercial game that I'm working on, but I would love to know your thoughts. What are your thoughts on this knockback function? Is there anything that you would do to improve it? Let me know in the comments down below so that we can all benefit from this tutorial. And if you found this video helpful, then please give this video a like. I really want YouTube to like me more and please consider subscribing. I hope that you guys have an amazing day. Take care.